I'm not taping you. There are four men trying to protect me from you. What? There are four men trying to protect me from you. Yeah. Uh, were they run through a metal detector? No, they were not. Okay, so is it possible that he had all these firearms right now? Anybody that would come in here could potentially hold a firearm, correct? What kind of room comes in with video cameras, tripods, t-shirts, masks, you know, dark sunglasses? I mean, I'm just saying what the four of us are thinking right now. So, I'm so if you don't know my four questions, was your plan from the very beginning in collusion with the mob and your like-minded crowd to continue in collusion with the mob Yes, because you are trying to intimidate me. Corruption accusations here at his castle. It's kind of crazy to me that he just happened to be here today. And the only reason we are standing here is because of the actions of Mr. Carroll over here um, earlier in the day where he tried to antagonize the public to the cost and attack us and our presence here. Um, yep. I'm asking for police protection. I got you, I got you. Okay, you have trying to intimidate me back here. I wasn't talking to her, I was talking to these generals by myself. I provided a public comment on the resolution and Vice Mayor Avery mischaracterized my comment in a response. This was surprising since the Brown Act explicitly prohibits council members from directly responding to public comments. Well, how much? How many years? Uh, 20 years. Oh, you're right. oh they're short and changing right now. No, I just haven't uh, put the next one. According to a 2021 LA Times article, ICNB is backed by Vice Mayor Mary Agram at the 4% financial stake in the paper. And then he so again, back to the city manager, back to the chief. Are, are we okay to conduct this meeting? Is it safe? Is this going to get more fully? What, what am I expecting? Is it better that I do this by Zoom? We had spoken with the individuals earlier today, and we're not aware of any big threat at this time. Standing up for humanity and rejecting colonialism slash capitalism slash Zionism. But it had to be destroyed, if not by paid agitators, then by police force. And I asked that the city attorney actually use the portal to take a look at why Irvine Community News and Views has its name as LLC. We're not back LLC. in the civic. We're back for the city. What is it? The city hall meeting or something like that. We we're having a good day in the morning, but they kind of got crazy with us in the end. So pretty much we're back for the city hall because we talked to a council. A council member and he pretty much told us that we're able to come to the meeting and now uh, be part of it so we're gonna go see what's up hope people don't react and uh, shut down the place like they did in the morning with us but it's what it is As you can see we got the see the firm police right here they're ready for the meeting in partnership with the community out here the demonstration this one I think yeah this is the rounded but I mean this thing it's a beast and it really it's a monster Your fingers all.
It's one of the veteran groups, or what's that? Oh, I thought you guys were in the military. I was in the army. I was asking oh, you were in the military. No, oh no, no, no. Not me. I don't know about them, but not me. Okay. And I'm just an independent journalist, but that's it. Oh, that's sick. Thank yeah. Keep doing that. Good work. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. I saw it come through. Where is the policy listed that yeah. says that you can't come in if you're wearing a mask? Yeah, I did get it just before I came downstairs, so I do have it. Right. But yeah, so all good there. But anyways, yeah. yeah so I appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. And then I, oh, one last question. Do I submit a formal complaint to a U.S. council member? I'm sure he's going to get a ton tomorrow when this goes live, but I would like a direct answer. Good so question. Good question. You want you, you put an email address right on the? I think it was an email address. Yes. Okay. Let me email you. Okay, perfect. Perfect. Okay. That's the best. I think there's two email addresses though. I think look, I, but one. I could be wrong. Use the first one. Use the first one. Yes. Okay. Thank you. It may not be till tomorrow. Obviously, <laughs> this has been, been wonderful. No problem. Anyways, all right. Thank you. Thank you. Damn, he's professional. All right. So we can't stand here. Okay. But we can't stand out of the way. So he said anywhere we're not in the way. So uh, your stick might be in the way. <laughs> you need a monopod, sir. I know, I'm a good one. How far does it stretch? Will it hit the ground or no? No. It does, but no. not big enough. Oh, okay. <laughs> like a little midget one. I might have a spare monopod. I'm a, I'm a good one. I got more, more of these, but... I think our last spare one got broken. I bought one for... Yeah. What's her face? No, and then she never came out. Hello? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. I just want to make sure you're using this. Okay, cool. Okay, very nice to us. Yeah, this camera is way better. This is this one. This is
Irvine as successor agency to the dissolved Irvine Redevelopment Agency. The time is 3.05. Will the clerk please call the roll? Councilmember Barnard Carroll. Here. Councilmember Barnard Kim. Here. Councilmember Barnard Casino. Here. Vice Mayor, Vice Chair Nathan. Here. And the record will reflect that the mayor and the chairwoman is absent. I understand uh, that uh, the mayor will not be presiding today. She's visiting our various sister cities, and so it falls to the four of us to carry on. Uh, with that, uh, I'll now ask the city clerk to provide information on how to participate in today's meeting. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Members of our audience who wish to speak may submit their name into the speaker kiosk located next to the city clerk. Additional kiosks are available in the main lobby. We also offer the ability to provide live comments on City Council agenda items via Zoom and submit comments through our e-comment system. For those who wish to participate virtually, visit zoom.us using any web browser or the Zoom app on smartphones or tablets and our meeting ID 848-4853-1263. The passcode is 272-906. We move these in a computer smartphone or tablet. You may also dial in by calling 669-900-6833 or 346-248-7799 and entering same meeting ID and passcode. The meeting ID and passcode are also available on our web page at cityofirvine.org slash ICCB in selecting city council meetings. Those who wish to provide a comment via Zoom are asked to enter the speaker queue by raising their hand electronically. The city clerk will call your name and allow you to unmute your microphone at the appropriate time. Those dialing by call phone will be identified by the last two digits of their call phone number. We ask that you please state your name for the record. The time limits for speaker are noted in the posted agenda and are established based on the number of requests to speak submitted before the first speaker is called. Requests to speak submitted after the first speaker is called shall receive 90 seconds. Those who wish to provide written comments on matters before the City Council may do so by clicking e-comment on the City Council Meeting Agenda webpage at cityofirvine.org slash ACCB. All comments will be provided to the City Council as part of the meeting record and will be uploaded to the City's website. Any e-comments received before, during, or after discussion of these items will still be included as part of the official record. For technical assistance with Zoom before or during the meeting, please call 949-724. 6078. For any other questions or assistance, please contact the City Clerk's Office at 949-724-6205 or via email at clerk at cityofirvine.org. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. And before we begin, I'd like to respectfully remind my City Council colleagues to please limit comments to five minutes each. If necessary, uh, we will hold additional rounds of discussion each agenda item. Uh, with that, I ask that our city clerk call time when each member's time is up, and then uh, I'll encourage members to wrap it up, and perhaps we'll move on to another round. We uh, will now consider closed session items number 1.1 through 1.6. Those participating via Zoom who wish to speak on these items may now raise their hand electronically to enter the speaker queue. Uh, I'll turn now to the city attorney to please announce the closed session items to be considered. Thank you, uh, Vice Mayor. Uh, there are, as you know, these six items on for consideration, actually seven items on for consideration tonight. Uh, the first item is a conference with legal counsel regarding an item of existing litigation. This is under Government Code Section 54956.91. The case there is Kingston Core versus City of Irvine, 4th Appellate District Division 3, case numbers G06185, G06121, and G06185. The second item is also a matter of existing litigation under Government Code Section 54956.91. This case is um, titled Theodore Construction versus City of Irvine. That's a Michigan Superior Court case number 30 2021 0121381. 
The third and fourth items are conferences with legal counsel regarding matters of anticipated litigation, and this is under Government Code Section 54956.9D4. As I noted, there are two cases in that category. The next item is, the next three items are all conferences with real property negotiators, all under Government Code Section 54956.8. The first one involves property at Assessor's Parcel Number 580-76-513. The agency negotiators are all the Chief, the City Manager Pete Carmichael, the Assistant City Manager Steve Torelli, the Manager for the Great Park, and Jeffrey Melching, the City Attorney. The negotiating parties are the City of Irvine and Dan Almquist, who is the Chief Executive Officer of Almquist Corporation. Under negotiation, there are price and terms of payment. The second of the three real property negotiations involves Assessor's Parcel Number 104-11-828 and 104-11-806. The agency negotiators are Pete Carmichael, the Assistant City Manager, Jeffrey Melching, the City Attorney, and Oliver Chief, the City Manager. The negotiating parties are the City of Irvine and Frank Kim as the Chief Executive Officer for the County of Orange. Under negotiation, there again are price and terms of payment. And last, mercifully, a conference with real property negotiators regarding 17300 Red Hill Avenue in Irvine. The agency negotiators are Oliver Chief, the City Manager, Pete Carmichael, the Assistant City Manager, Jeffrey Melching, the City Attorney, and the negotiating parties are the City of Irvine and Park Miller, the Executive Vice President of Lincoln Property Company. And again, under negotiation, there are price and terms of payment, and that's all. Thank you, Mr. Melching. Before we convene to closed session, which is going to be an unusually long one today, lasting, we believe, to 5 o'clock, before we convene to closed session, this is the time to consider public testimony. I'll now turn to the City Clerk and ask, are there any members of the public who wish to speak on these closed session items? No, thank you. All right, if there be none, we'll now then simply convene to closed session. Point of order, may I ask a question here? Yes, Council Member. I think we should probably do this as good because the room is clear, and I don't just sit around and let things happen to me. I'm proactive. So I'd like to ask the Chief of Police and the City of Hall to report a visual bar to have masks on, dark sunglasses on, and that our recording be muted. So if you have any information on that, I'd like to have all the information possible, please. I want to determine whether I feel safe enough to continue deliberating in this $800-an-hour local City Council meeting. Go ahead. Chief, do you want to respond to that? Yeah, thank you for your question, Council Member. Whether it's the four individuals that you're referring to or any member of the public that attends these meetings, we don't have the authority to just go up and ask for them to identify themselves. Okay. Were they run through a metal detector? No, they were not. Okay. So is it possible that we have open firearms right now? Anybody that would come in here could potentially hold a firearm, correct? What about everyone who comes in with video cameras, tripods, T-shirts, masks, you know, dark sunglasses? I mean, I'm just saying what the four of us are thinking right now. So I'm happy to do my job, but I'm not sure if I should feel safe. So I need to understand what we're supposed to do here. Because I'll go back in there and deal with seven closed session items, but I just, and I'm glad the kids aren't on my face so you can see my face, okay, this is public, because, and Susan Sayer, if you want to bring up that I don't attend these meetings, maybe you ought to think, Susan, about the people that are standing up there. Tammy, myself, Larry, and Kathleen, I think about that. Okay, Susan? Next time you audit my participation in this. Okay? So again, back to the city manager and back to the chief of police. Are we okay to conduct this meeting? Is it safe? Is this going to get more unruly? What am I expecting? Isn't it better if I do this by Zoom? We had spoken with the individuals earlier today, and we're not aware of any threat at this time. Would they be willing to be searched? We can certainly ask them if they want to confirm on the search and make sure the answer is going to be no. Did you inform them, and I apologize, Chief, but I don't know. I'm not sure I feel safe. I'm not sure. Were they informed that this entire meeting audio and video is recorded from end to end without fail? I don't know if anybody informed them of that, 
but uh, like I said earlier, it's it's open to the public. If they feel they want to come in and film it, they're certainly entitled to do so. I'm not aware of any um, rules that are in place that forbids people from doing that. Does this feel like it's a coordinated effort to force people or force them into it? I don't know what their intention is. All right. Well, Vice Mayor, for the record, I'm not sure how much longer I'm going to stay here, but I'm happy to go in the back room and do the footage. Well, let me just say. Uh, of the mayor, uh, we're now down to four people, and I would hope that my colleagues would cooperate in preserving the quorum, moving on pace through the agenda today. Um, I don't see any reason to do otherwise, and I think in any event, uh, we've got a closed session that we're going to go into now. And um, I think we should just do that. Any further concerns that you have, uh, Councilmember Terrell, I think we can take up with the Chief of Police, the City Attorney, and others, but uh, I would hope that we return at 5 o'clock and move quickly through the balance of the Council agenda. With that, we'll bring you in the closed session. They trying to violate our rights to record in public. What's that, that all about, guys?
Instagram, Facebook, stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Hi. Well, there's a lot of communication and a lot of different people. Our the church members have been going up to the encampment at UC. You see I am there and everything and giving services and supporting them. There's a lot of that stuff going on in colleges right now. Yeah. Yep. You have a wonderful day. Yeah, somebody doesn't attend much of these. <laughs> <laughs> and I can't speak to it. <laughs> Anyways, um, if by chance yeah. I, you don't hear from me tomorrow, absolutely. Feel free to call upstairs. Absolutely. And then, you know, do you have a card on you? Or? I do. I appreciate your professionalism. Oh. Most everybody's been cordial. Yeah, you know, I'm trying, you know, I mean, it's. Them. <laughs> and from what I've been learned, he's running for senator, so it's not a good look for him. No, so, yeah, that I've done, that I'm not aware of. But um, anyway, all right. So yeah, so I wouldn't. I mean, you're so welcome to wait here if you want to, but no, they won't yeah. come out. To we'll, do both. we'll figure it out. But yeah, he's running for senate. That's going to be a problem because we have we actually have a huge platform. So. One quick thing I want to mention to you too, right, just here, here. Just going back to speakers, depending on the number of speakers and on the agenda, yeah, that's kind of what I announced. Depending on the number of speakers, will determine um, the allotted time. So if it's like a, I need like a minute. Oh, it, it, it'll never <laughs> so the, the minimum time is going to be 90 seconds, depending on how many people it'll show up. Like, like but it's up to three minutes. But anyway, I just, just, for for I just want to make a statement because I got on record him making threats to me and our team. When everybody else has been fine with us, yeah. we'll be cordial, we're professional, we're answering any questions. My shirt says, ask me questions. I didn't see that until just now. <laughs> so did you ask me questions? No, you're saying I any question. I asked you instead. Is that happen, okay? So. Yeah, yeah, you can ask anybody. <laughs> you can ask any of us. Yeah, any of us. You sometimes get some weird I could ask you any questions too. Huh? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Somebody asked me about winning lottery numbers. <laughs> no, if I knew that there was a possibility of that, believe me, I'd be asking. <laughs> if I knew them, I wouldn't give them out. It has not worked out for me when I was. Wouldn't that be funny if I gave them on accident? <laughs> well, it would be, you know, it would be funny. But what's, what's really funny is, oh, like, I've got a new clerk and I'm like, can I get the winning numbers, please? And then they'll stop and, like, everything about it. Like, huh? Do you mean the past ones? I'm like, I'm just kidding. It's all good. Anyways, okay. Thank you so much. All right, you're welcome. Thank you for your professionalism. Of course. Wonderful. All right. Yeah, thank you for being professional, man. Thank we you. appreciate it. You guys take care and I guess see you. Yeah, we'll see you five. Okay. Thank you. Yes, sir, I'm sorry. Let's go. Thank you. 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 I wouldn't vote for him, that's for sure. And we gotta say thanks to the police chief that he didn't obey and he knows the law. Because if he would have been a police chief that doesn't know the law, he probably would have kicked us out already or even arrested us, arrested us worse. So thank you, police chief. You know what's up. Well, how much? How many years? Uh, 20 years. Oh, you're already, oh, they're short and changing you right no, now. No, I just haven't uh, put the next one on. <laughs> yet, so. Hey, thank you for your service, right, though. Thank you. How's everything else going? Yes. <laughs> Do you have a permit? 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 Do you have
ask any question. Do you have a permit? Okay, so you don't have a permit. You cannot film the way you're filming. Put your tripod down and sit like everyone else. And stop blocking the eye. You sit down right here. Let them handle it. Nobody blocking the aisles. Look at that. There's plenty of space for people to walk by, man. I mean, and they they put the shares themselves, not us. I don't think they get it, man. Now oh, they're back. So I tried to go for the and the reason they had to get a permit is because she hired an individual or company to come and get a photography. They hired them. That makes it a commercial transaction because you were specifically hired for that purpose. You need a business license, you need a permit to step in to hire someone. If she had just said, hey, friends, come along, nothing would have happened. Everything would have been fine. Everything would have been fine. But that's not what happened. You just don't block the hours, huh? Oh, he's not here. Yo, so our guy Mike Mike was not here. Remember guys the guy that wanted us to get kicked out by the police chief? He did not show up. Well, that's supposed to be his chair right now. The one he's grabbing, that was supposed to be his chair, but he's not here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He scared the cameras, my people. You guys should do the same. Hold your city council members accountable. Record them. It's your public duty. So her husband was the firm that has taken tax dollars right out of your pocket in the form of COVID loans. He has taken tax dollars out of your pocket to do mailers, $70,000 with mailers. I know for a fact there's a lot of people that, you know, $70,000 is not really paying unemployment tax full time, you know, over the course of, you know, seven to ten years. So, you literally mailers for your campaign that are going to be sent out to you and your family. So, I mean, you know, you have to be careful when you do that. Yeah, you have to be
So are they waiting for him? Or is he actually not coming out? I think he's not going to come out. Oh my god. Are you kidding me? Is that lady? She's bitching about us too now. Jesus. What a bunch of people. The one lady over there? Oh yeah, I see her. Damn, she is. <laughs> They're complaining about us. Showed up. Oh, oh, oh. I thought the embarrassment was gonna win him, but I guess not. We're still here, buddy. He's looking at me. But, oh, he's looking at me. What's up, boy? <laughs> Bless those in this room and 
this grace to be a part of Amen. Amen. Well, thank you, uh, Pastor Chris Lee from Mariner's Church. We appreciate your warm words of invitation. Thank you. Please be seated. So, I would uh, like to thank everyone on behalf of the entire council for taking the time to be here with us this evening. Before we begin, I want to provide a few details about how we're going to conduct the city's business tonight. Um, this is similar to our last few city council meetings. First, uh, if you wish to provide a public comment, please enter your name into one of the electronic speaker kiosks. I'll be asking the city clerk to announce the names of those who have signed up to speak, and when you do hear your name called, please make your way to the front of the council chamber and line up next to our city clerk and staff. The time limit for speaker will be strictly adhered to in order to maximize efficiency. For those providing testimony in person, the microphone will be silenced once each speaker's time limit is up. I know this sometimes uh, appears abrupt and even rude, but we have found it's the only way to move through all the requested speakers. So we ask those who are going to be speaking, whether it's from home or in person here, to watch the time and the time limit so that we don't abruptly cut you off at the end. And similar to our last meetings, we'll be moving the city manager's report, announcements, committee reports, council reports, and additions and deletions up ahead of the non-agendized public comments portion of our meeting. We'll be allowing a total of 30 minutes for non-agendized public comments initially at the start of our meeting. After 30 minutes, we'll be ending the initial public comments uh, for non-agendized items. We'll be ending that portion of our meeting uh, after 30 minutes. And then uh, we'll take up items listed on our city council meeting agenda. Speakers will be taken in the order in which individuals have signed up, except for those who have submitted videos or other multimedia content. Per city council policy, all multimedia public comments shall be taken last in order. This policy will again be strictly adhered to this evening. For those who signed up to speak under public comments, non-agendized items, and were unable to speak during the initial 30 minute period, we will be providing an additional opportunity to speak following all our council items, our business items on the agenda. For tonight's meeting, we will also be limiting public comments on consent calendar items. All of those are listed as uh, item three. Uh, those will be limited in total to 30 minutes. We uh, appreciate everyone's uh, cooperation and understanding, and it will uh, provide, we think, the opportunity for as many people as possible to be heard, and yet for us to move uh, through the agenda effectively uh, and get all of our business done at a reasonable hour. With all that said, uh, we'll begin tonight's meeting with a presentation. Uh, at this time, uh, we'll have a presentation uh, of under item 2.1. Uh, this is an e-bike update. Uh, those participating by Zoom may now raise their hand electronically to enter the speaker queue. And at this point, uh, 
our staff having come forward, I uh, invite uh, staff to introduce themselves and proceed with the presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good evening, Vice Mayor and members of the City Council. My name is Shahi Jahangar and I'm IPD's Traffic Division Lieutenant. Not only are e-bikes and bike safety very big topics in the community, but May is National Bicycle Safety Month. I am grateful for the opportunity to share an overview of public safety's response to e-bike related issues in our community. I'd like to briefly differentiate between e-bikes and other illegal e-vehicles. E-bikes are essentially bicycles with an integrated electric motor designed to assist the riders pedaling rather than replace it entirely. E-bikes have fewer regulatory requirements, such as not requiring the driver's license, registration, or insurance. IPD, as well as other Orange County law- American Pacific Islander Heritage Month Empowerment Summit, where uh, at the event he recognized eight exceptional uh, AAPI local leaders, community organizers, and students. And lastly, uh, I want to announce uh, an update of Vermont Tech Week. Uh, this past month, we wrapped up an incredible second annual Vermont Tech Week between April 16th and 21st with more than 25 events, which brought together tech enthusiasts, investors, industry leaders to celebrate innovation and establish Irvine as a prominent ecosystem in Southern California. And this year's event saw record attendance, and I'm so grateful to our dedicated team for bringing so much passion and enthusiasm to this terrific week. And I would like to um, have a, a shout out to many of those who participated, such as um, you know, Melinda Payne from the um, Irvine Tech Hub, uh, Ryan Solon from the Entrepreneur Center for UCI, Scott Fox from OC Startup Council, and uh, this and our city's very own communication team, Melinda Haley. And thank you all so much for your help. I, I want to thank Council Member Kathleen Cedar uh, for joining um, us at the closing ceremony. So that is it. So thank you. Thank you, uh, Council Member Kim. Council Member Carroll. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, as you know, I have often, uh, last few minutes, taken this uh, announcements period to talk a little bit about um, some of the things that are happening in the community that are small but significant, such as um, saving uh, Petey the dog from being euthanized at our animal shelter, to uh, saving a, a uh, resident cell phone that had fallen down the break, and so on and so forth. So tonight, I'd like to talk a little bit about, uh, if we could put the slide up, um, I was absolutely thrilled to hear that my staff member, Ryan, took first place in the 5K event at the fourth annual Global Hope 365 Walk Run to end child marriage and human trafficking. Ryan, there he is. Stand up. <laughs> Congratulations, Ryan. This event was a huge success, and the reason was the reason for it is obviously very serious. It's to raise awareness and help save lives of those that are impacted by the tragedies of child marriage and human trafficking. Global Hope 365 administers two ambassador programs that are composed of volunteer-led and staff-supported local teams across the country working to raise awareness about these critically important issues. Their statewide campaign, the California Coalition to End Child Marriage, brings awareness to current laws in California that actually allow for the abuse of minors. I'm always happy to support Global Hope 365. I'm thrilled that Brian, uh, that Brian won, won the race, so we're able to talk about it. I want to thank Rima and her entire team at Global Hope 365. And just as a quick uh, piece of information you can jot down or just grab it on your phone to learn more about how you can support this amazing cause, please visit the website at globalhope365.org. Thank you, Mr. Great, well, thank you. Councilman Cedar, you have something? Um, let me then uh, make a few announcements. First, uh, one of a, a little more of a personal nature. Uh, all of us, uh, I think, uh, had the opportunity to attend the Ciclo Irvine event, which was um, a huge success, great fun. Uh, but 
required by way of staff planning, preparation, execution. Uh, was, um, it was stunning that it was carried off uh, so well. Even the weather held up. Uh, it was raining in the morning, but it had cleared by the time thousands of people were able to enjoy Sycamore Irvine. And I expect to be getting a report um, in the uh, in the weeks and months ahead uh, on that event. Is that is that true, Mr. City Manager? Correct. Yes, it is. But you're multitasking. Okay, that'll be great. Uh, I think everybody had a, a, a great time, and this is going to become an Irvine tradition. Let me make uh, a few announcements. There's a Gateway Preserve Community Meeting. We're excited about the development of the Gateway Preserve, a brand new open space preserve in North Irvine. We invite our community to learn about this 711-acre haven, which will offer stunning natural landscapes and open spaces to explore. So join us uh, at an informational meeting this Thursday, May 16th from 6 to 8 p.m. at the beautiful Portola Springs Community Center. At this meeting, you will discover the plans for Gateway Preserve, including maps and potential trails. You'll learn about the plan that outlines how the city will manage and develop the preserve while protecting sensitive habitats. You'll gain uh, information on a regional effort to conserve wildlife and open spaces and the conditions and terms the city must follow when developing and managing the Gateway Preserve. City staff, Irvine Ranch Conservancy staff, and other experts will be on hand to answer your questions and provide additional details about this project. For more information, visit cityofirvine.org slash gateway preserve. <coughs> Next, uh, Pride in Irvine. In honor of Harvey Milk Day and June Pride Month, the city is hosting its third annual Pride in Irvine event. Join us on Wednesday, May 22nd from 5 to 7 p.m. at the Irvine Civic Center Piazza, that's the plaza, as we raise the progress flag in recognition and support of our LGBTQIA plus community. I think that includes everyone who's relevant to this. Explore programs provided by local advocacy and support organizations, enjoy live music, refreshments, and activities, while understanding valuable resources, making connections, and celebrating pride at this free event. For more information, visit cityofirvine.org slash pride. Next, Memorial Day events. The City of Irvine is hosting two Memorial Day events to honor and remember the sacrifice of fallen American service members. A special candlelighting ceremony will be held at the Northwood Gratitude and Honor Memorial at Northwood Community Park on Sunday, May 26th at 4 p.m. This year's event will pay special tribute to fallen service members who served in Afghanistan and Iraq. The ceremony is held in partnership with the Northwood Memorial Committee. Guests are encouraged to bring lawn chairs or blankets for seating. The city will also host its annual Memorial Day ceremony in the formal garden at Colonel Bill Barber Marine Corps Memorial Park, that's our Civic Center Park, right here on Monday, May 27th at 10 a.m. A commanding officer from Irvine's adopted 211 Marine Battalion will speak to recognize fallen service members and their sacrifice. 
Guests will have the opportunity to honor family and friends who died in service, in service to the nation by posting a brief remembrance on a memory board at the event. For those wishing to express gratitude, the members of Irvine's adopted 211 Marine Battalion, cards will be available to send a message of appreciation and support. For more information about these Memorial Day events, please visit cityofirvine.org slash special events. Finally, we have a baby gift drive. This month, you can help support Irvine's adopted 211 Marine Battalion by donating new and unopened baby care items. The Irvine 211 Marine Adoption Committee is holding a baby gift drive through Tuesday, June 4th. You can drop off donations such as new baby clothes, swallow blankets, and newborn toiletries here at Irvine City Hall and at the Great Park Visitors Center. All donations go to families at Camp Pendleton. It's a great opportunity for us to demonstrate our gratitude for the service and sacrifices of our great Marines and their families. So for more information on that matter, visit Irvine211marines.org. And with that, uh, I think we've concluded our announcements. So we'll uh, proceed to ask the city manager uh, if there are any additions or deletions to tonight's agenda. No changes to the agenda, Mr. Vice Mayor. There being none, we'll now uh, move on to public comments. Uh, these are public comments for non-agendized items. At this point, uh, we'll now hear uh, public comments for matters that means that are not on the City Council pre-posted agenda. Those uh, participating via Zoom may now raise their hand electronically to enter the speaker queue. Any member of the public may address the City Council on items within the City Council's subject matter jurisdiction, but which are not listed on the agenda. However, no action may be taken on matters that are not part of the posted agenda. As a reminder, we will initially be allowing a total of 30 minutes for public comments on non-agendized items. With that, I'll ask the city clerk to please provide the number of requests that have been submitted to speak on non-agendized items. Thank you, Vice Mayor. We have 27 requests to speak. 27 requests, so now we do the math here. So that means that each speaker will be limited to 90 seconds? Two minutes. Two minutes. Well, if it's over 30, it's 90 seconds. Very well. Anybody uh, who signs up after the first speaker begins speaking will, however, be limited to 90 seconds. Very well. We'll uh, first consider public testimony by those attending in person. But with that, I'll turn now to the city clerk uh, to call forward those who wish to speak. Thank you, Vice Mayor. If I could call the first five speakers up and ask them to line up next to uh, the clerk. Uh, Julie, Mike H, Steve G, Darren L, and Stephanie G. And we'll start with Julie. As our speakers are coming forward, I'll just remind our speakers that we have a, pretty much of an automatic shutoff at two minutes. Uh, that being the case, uh, be mindful of the uh, ticking clock here so that uh, we don't appear to be rude and we don't cut you off mid sentence.
Thank you. Um, good evening, and, and thank you for hearing from me. I'm, as you know, a resident, longtime resident of the city of Irvine. So I'm here with concerns about Irvine Community News and Views, which is beautifully laid out, which I've received in my home. And I, there were comments in my community made about, and they were very rude terms, so I'm not going to quote them, but about how they're affiliated with Vice Mayor Apron. And I, I thought at the time, especially given how rudely it was put, surely not. Surely this is something that I should be reading and taking to heart as an independent newspaper. And then I kind of dug in more, and I was really concerned about what I found. So here I am. What I handed up is a statement of organization um, a California Form 400 that reflects that it was organized as a slate mailer. And for folks who don't know, a slate mailer, according to the California Fair Political Practices Commission, is a mass mailing that supports or opposes a total of four or more candidates for ballot measures. And the remaining papers are, they reflect payments made by that organization and then also a termination of its status as a mailer. But I have to say that once ha having received that information right, and understood what the background was, I see that there are um, some of the same people involved in writing, and I see attack pieces against Councilmember Trisier and Carol and Kim, and somewhat ironically, right now, posted on there and says, honor my community news and use dark money, who's trying to influence your vote, and there's a warning about some of the mailers that you receive may not be from the sources that you think they're coming from, and I just, I would ask for more transparency for uh, for Irvine residents. Thank you. Thank you for taking the time to comment tonight. Next, our next speaker is Mike Keach, all my speed chief. Wait, hold on one second, your microphone doesn't seem to be working. concern that I'd like to raise for public, for the record of public awareness. So at my home as well, I received the Irvine Community News and Views, which claims to be fiercely independent, um, but on a closer inspection, uh, does, definitely appears to be misleading. Um, it provided a business license, and if you look there, the uh, contact is Carrie Mayhem. Um, her, uh, the Secretary of State, statement of information on this organization, uh, the manager is Carrie Mayhem Agron, whom I understand to be um, Vice Mayor's uh, Adrian's daughter-in-law. Um, this is a little bit weird because that business license omits the last name of, of uh, the contact. And I just think like generally this publication is clearly political while masquerading as independent. And I think it's counter to the principles of open democracy that people fear and my fellow citizens should be made aware of it. Thank you. Thank you for taking the time to share the comments. Next speaker is Steve Chi, followed by Darren Mel. I would like to first speak um, to Mr. Agra. Since last December, urban residents, including myself, kept warning you, Mr. Agra, that the hate spewed by Hamas supporters here in Irvine was not going to stop a speech, a hate speech, but it will fester into actions. And lo and behold, it did involve into hysterics, threats, trespassing, uh, property damage, disruption of learning, and now it is the only one small step away from street violence. I've been to UCI, I've seen more. It seems improbable that you, Mr. Abram, as a career politician, were oblivious to the consequences of your support and approval of this hate fest. It looks like you knew exactly what you were doing. So here are my four questions. Was your plan from the very beginning, in collusion with the mob and your like-minded crowd, to erode the body and soul of the city? Do you share, number two, do you share the anti-American socialist and pro Hamas ideas of the regrettable current mayor of our life? We have yet to hear you denounce her ideas. Do you plan to implement these outrageous ideas 
if you are connected to the main position. And finally, component, more than 90% of your self-proclaimed independent, but in fact self-serving propaganda newspaper, airline community news and views. Does this mysterious entity also finance your campaign? Mr. Echo, looks like you have a lot of explaining to do before the oncoming elections. Why not to use this, uh, why not to use for this purpose the pages of your own? Thank you, sir, for taking the time to comment tonight. Next speaker is Darren Hall, followed by Stephanie G. Darren? Hi. Um, about six weeks ago, according to an online poll, out of 100 local residents, 77 of those polled considered Irvine Community News and Views to be advertising and 31 residents of those polled considered it to be legitimate news. And here's an Irvine resident voter also sharing these concerns. The paper provides the description that as an independent newspaper, our mission at ICNV is to inform and educate Irvine residents on issues that directly impact their lives. My understanding is that an independent newspaper is free of influence by any government or corporate interests. With that in mind, many are wondering how ICNV could possibly be considered independent. Many have asserted that ICNV is unfortunately biased in, a, in favor of our Vice Mayor Larry Akron and his interests. According to a 2021 LA Times article, ICNV is backed by Vice Mayor Larry Agron with a 4% financial stake in the paper, and that he helped start it in 2014. Does our vice mayor's stake remain at 4% interest? It is notable, one of the contributors to INC, ICNV appears to be Dr. Phyllis Agron, the wife of our vice mayor. Uh, vice Mayor Agron also appointed on May 23rd, 2023, Dr. Phyllis Agron to the Irvine Children Youth and Family Advisory Committee. So she submitted in 2023 and 2024 a statement of economic interests regarding ICNB on California 700 forms that I've submitted. Um, can we find out what percentage interest Dr. Phyllis Abram holds in ICNB? Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Darren L, and if I could call the next five speakers forward, please. Carol L, Jimmy B, Wendy B, Sandy L, and Jacques Char. Yeah, hi. Watching the Trump trial, it's very clear that the National Enquirer's only job was to protect the cover, to protect and cover Trump's lies. It appears to me that here in Irvine, we also have a National Enquirer in the Irvine Community News and Views, whose only purpose it is to protect Larry Cagan. To quote Farrah Khan, our mayor, from an LA Times article in 2020, I think everybody knows it's Larry Hagan's paper. I wouldn't call it an independent paper if I was promoting myself in it all the time and misleading the public. Same article, Councilman Carroll. Larry Hagan's quote-unquote newspaper is misleading to residents because people expect campaign laws to be followed and enforced, namely that the people who pay for the political mail will be identified. In this case, this newspaper, Agron, is once again avoiding disclosing the real truth by hiding political mail inside this post newspaper. What's worse is I'm submitting a copy of Form 461 for this paper. For those who don't know, Form 461 is for major political donors. It appears that Irvine Community News is also a major political donor. Why is a fiercely independent newspaper also a major donor to a to a political campaign. What or who else does it sponsor? Who is the dark money that donates to it? I wonder if people have donated to this paper thinking it's independent when it's reality a political pact. And I wonder if that's against the law. I'm pretty sure it is. I am asking the city manager and attorney to once have the moral courage to do your job and to investigate this paper and this obvious campaign abuse. And I am demanding that you, Larry Agron, put a disclaimer on the paper saying that you're a part owner and your family is too. 
Thank you. And as we approach Memorial Day, I want to say God bless to all our veterans. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Irvine Community News and Views asks its readers, when you look at its website or you see it in the mail, donate, donate here, support local journalism. So that's what I did. I donated because I understood I was supporting a local newspaper. So imagine my surprise when I went to the City of Irvine Transparency Portal and discovered, in fact, this publication directly supports politicians like Mr. Adrian, committees like Build a Great Park, and nowhere does it disclose that my money that I donated was going to something political. To understand what I mean, I suggest that all Irvine residents take a minute and follow these directions. Go to the City of Irvine website, to the bottom and look for the transparency portal. Click on FPPC Form 700 Campaign Statements, and under the Campaign Disclosure Statement, click here. Yes, it's complicated and select an advanced search and type in Irvine Community. 140 pages will come up of money that goes back and forth between Irvine Community News and Views and various committees and things that it's sponsored. And it's so complicated, it takes a scholar in this to understand it, which apparently somebody who's been here long enough might know. There's loans, contributions, unpaid bills, payments, just as an example, if you did the same thing with OC Register or Los Angeles Times, you get two or three that are just bills that were paid for advertisements. These are not bills for advertisements. It's enough money to fund park in the city of Irvine. I think that we need to closely look at what's happening in our uh, portal, and I ask that the city attorney actually use the portal to take a look at why Irvine Community News and Views has its name as LLC, not LLC. Standing up for humanity and rejecting colonialism slash capitalism slash Zionism. But it had to be destroyed, if not by paid agitators, then by police force. It was a slate, it was a committee, it has so many varied names. If you want to clean this up, Mr. Adrian, I think Thank you for your comments. Good evening. Online on the Urban Community News and Views page, which states that Urban Community News and Views was founded on the belief that news should be written or um, shouldn't be written or founded by corporate developers or special interest groups. It asks you to support the local journalism. Here is what I find interesting about that. Irvine Community News and Views prints a physical paper, emails tens of thousands of recipients an email version of the paper, and follows OC residents on Facebook and their, and their advertising. This is all, this all costs money, a lot of money. Are we to believe that this free newspaper that has very few advertisements, collects no money from its subscribers, and per their own website has a readership that exceeds 55,000, does not, does so without any money from special interest groups? Who is putting the bill for these costs? Is it the paper of stockholders and owners, the Argonne family? If this is true, As a, as a conservative citizen, I think we need to understand if there is a misappropriation of funds going on, and I think an investigation should be opened by the city as to how this publication is claiming to be a newspaper and yet sponsoring committees. Other newspapers, such as the OC Register, doesn't sponsor committees. Something just doesn't add up. Thank you. Thank you for taking the time to come back. I'm speaking tonight to correct an error Vice Mayor Adrian has communicated in and outside of City Hall about a resolution he proposed on February 27th. Four resolutions were introduced and one was regarding city staff working with IUSD to combat anti-Semitism and Islamophobia. 
I provided public comment on the resolution, and Vice Mayor Avery mischaracterized my comment in a response. This was surprising, since the Brown Act explicitly prohibits council members from directly responding to public comments. Yet Vice Mayor Avery called me out by name and stated that I and others who opposed this resolution were not concerned about hate incidents in IUSD or were suggesting IUSD does not want the city's assistance. Neither of these statements are accurate. The school resolution was put forth clearly as part of a political tactic regarding the conflict in Gaza in an attempt to get a win. Those who voted against the first resolution regarding the schools recognized this was a scheme, and more importantly understood the resolution was unnecessary and redundant. It is inappropriate for the city to prescribe conduct to IUSD. More importantly, IUSD already undertakes numerous efforts to combat hate and can easily provide this information to the city. Additionally, IUSD has always been fortunate to collaborate closely with the city and has always appreciated that help. Vice Mayor Avery and the entire council is well aware that there are regular formal dis city district liaison meetings between the board and council members. IUSD and the city have a strong relationship and we should allow that relationship to actually help solve issues rather than using students as a political football. Thank you. Thank you for taking the time to testify today. Sandy L. followed by Jacques Char. Recently, I started receiving the Irvine Community News and Views by email. I did not subscribe to it and I'm concerned how they got my email address. Further, it isn't apparent from the publication itself who is behind it. Among other things, it contains political opinions, for example, a recent negative piece on two of our current city council members without a balanced perspective. If I'm going to read someone's opinion, I want to know what their political affiliations are, who is funding them, and other identified information to provide transparency. There's no credibility without accountability. After researching, I found that ICNV is registered with the state of California to carry Mayhem Adrin, who is also the CEO and the daughter-in-law of our current vice mayor, Larry Adrin, who is running for mayor. Whatever Ms. Adrin's intentions with this publication, and whether or not they are technically legal, are they ethical for press? Doesn't the community deserve to know her affiliation to one of our political leaders? so that we can decipher our, our, themselves if ICMB is biased. On its domain page, they mention that we at ICMB unapologetically take sides on matters that impact urban residents. But who is taking sides? They also say that readers are allowed to share their personal views, but do any views not in line with Mr. Adrian's get published? Don't Irvine residents deserve answers to these many questions and transparency about this publication. Thank you for sharing your comments with us. If I could call the next five speakers forward, Anna B, Tom L, Jason Marshfield, Susan Sayer, and Jake. And we'll start with Anna B. Now, uh, it is a quote from the Daily Pilot, 
And um, this is what Mayor Khan, who's not here today, said um, back in 2020. I think everyone knows uh, the newspaper is linked to Larry Agron. Um, it is his newspaper, and whatever he puts out of it, uh, he has the right to do so. But she says, I wouldn't call it an independent newspaper. Um, she continued, I personally would feel very uncomfortable putting out the paper, cleaning up to be a community paper if I was promoting myself in it all the time. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Tom L. Paul Weissman is here. Yeah, so I wanted to ask a question to Mayor Khan tonight, and she could not be troubled to be here, so I'll have to ask her in absentia. So there was a screenshot that I saw making the rounds of Mayor Khan on her private Twitter account, which is different from her official one, saying of the uh, clearing out of the UCLA um, pro-Palestine demonstration, she was saying, how is this acceptable on any level? Student protesters were showing the world how to build a better community. Well, that was a statement. The question I wanted to ask Mayor Khan was, is this a true statement of yours? And if so, do you stand by this? What was disturbing to me, and I've gotten used to hearing Zionists and trash from these meetings, I don't want to fully open up that can of worms again. What angers me even more is the attack on capitalism. When we talk about capitalism, it's very clear, we need to be clear what we're talking about, which is the private ownership of goods and services within the economy. This is a fundamental aspect of American governance, and it is a consensus position among economists that capitalism is by far the best system ever devised for creating and distributing wealth. How are we supposed to attract businesses to our city if we have an anti-capitalist mayor? Mayor Khan, um, oh, that was the question I was gonna ask, I already asked it, so I think I'll leave it at that. Public comments, so now, Susan. Ms. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Susan Sayer, and I've lived in Irvine for over 43 years. I'm currently living at Regents Point, which is a senior community with over 300 residents. Many of our residents can no longer drive to, due to poor vision or having physical disabilities and thus feel isolated and depressed, which often leads to physical and cognitive decline. Feelings of isolation from community can be prevented by inspiring participation in stimulating activities, both in the residential facility and in the community at large, which leads to improved health, happiness, sense of belonging to the city community, and sense of personal well-being. Regents Point receives a senior connection publication to distribute to residents, which offer all kinds of activities for seniors, consisting of classes, tours, discussion groups, support service, and special events, which are designed for and dedicated to Irvine seniors. However, many Irvine senior residents do not drive, and thus are unable to access these activities. The Irvine Connect transportation system would be invaluable for enabling seniors who can't drive to take advantage of these activities. However, the Irvine Connect group does not include a number of senior residential communities or, or even all of Irvine's a senior center. The city claims that it reached out to the community for input regarding Irvine Connect groups. However, residents of senior communities uh, uh, most of them did not even ever hear of Irvine Connect, and they, of course, were not able to attend any of the, um, uh, of the activities that the, the city um, arranged to meet with the community because they could not drive to get to these uh, uh, activities. As Irvine Connect does not include Your time is up. Uh Yes, sir. Thank you for your public comments. I would like to call forward Mary Brower and Dana Seed. It is deeply concerning to witness the actions today of Council Member Carroll in Irvine. Um, it's kind of embarrassing that you are sitting here today to encourage 
or an attempt to encourage to weaponize the police department against people who are here to film the public process and to disseminate that public process to encourage members of the public to participate in the local government. And you try to weaponize the police against us, claiming false accusations of bringing weapons into the council chambers. I'm hearing a lot of um, corruption accusations here at this council. It's kind of crazy to me that you just happen to be here today. And the only reason we are standing here is because of the actions of Mr. Carroll over here um, earlier in the day where he tried to antagonize the public to accost and attack us and our presence here. Um, absolutely. On video. Can't refute, can't refute that. Oh, hold on one moment. Please, we have a speaker we want to do. Such behavior undermines the principles of democracy and the right of citizens to actively and to participate in the local government, which is everything our platform encourages, is to get the public out here to participate, like these people here today, and to discourage that participation and the, the reckless behavior of Council Member Carroll today is pretty disgusting. It's kind of grotesque, actually. So that's my time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for taking the time to share your comments. Next, Mary Fowler, followed by David Peek. Hi, my name is Mary Furnar, and I am um, talking about the new dog park that we're supposed to be getting. Uh, we had the temporary dog park that was set up and was destroyed and taken down by the city council. Uh, after only speaking to one HOA, and uh, based upon that input, the temporary dog park was removed. Central Park is closing this summer, and now we have no backup. This is the only dog park that we have in Irvine, by the way. The um, dog park is extremely important. We have a significant number of owners who come daily, and that is six days a week, and many of us actually have another dog park that we find in other cities we go to on Wednesday when the dog park is closed here in Irvine. Dog parks provide socialization for owners, and for some, this is a way that we keep track of health. During COVID, we were able to find out who was sick and who was not. Um, due to, it also provides socialization for dogs, which is important to decrease aggression in dogs. Dogs who are not properly socialized are likely to be more aggressive. Due to um, changes in health, this is also um, sometimes the only way to exercise dogs. People can sometimes uh, only walk their dogs to make them potty, but they can't give them the exercise that they need either due to becoming older and not being able to uh, take their dogs for walks or for chronic illnesses that have uh, interfered with their life or um, something like a fracture. People with more experience are also able to go ahead and share their experience with those who have less experience with dogs. And as our community grows, we share that with those who have less experience. Thank you for taking the time to testify. Good evening. This is my first time. Thank you very much for, uh, for listening in advance. The dog park I'm here to talk about, um, there's not much for me to say anymore. I did have a brief meeting uh, with some of the people in, within the city of Irvine who reassured me that there would be uh, a dog park that there wouldn't be any interruption whatsoever. So I just wanted to uh, respectfully request that we do honor that and that they have to our existing dog park that it does get relocated in a relatively seamless fashion and with no interruptions. Um, it's been of critical importance to me personally having a multi-dog household. For me emotionally, it's been wonderful to go to the dog park and to meet other humans and to be around other dogs and see my puppies grow up there and be socialized properly. The second thing I want to talk about is the, um, the housing building. Uh, right now, I'm on a fact-finding mission. We're independent uh, journalists. Information yeah, we use the same many what happens in our platform to try and get people engaged. Uh, like like uh, today, we did a, a, a freedom of information request. 
and we pretty much documented how to fill out the paper and everything so people are not scared of the government or of any political person so they feel motivated to come here record if they want or take participation yeah but we're independent we don't really uh, work for anybody or anything like that we're by ourselves yeah no problem I think it's very interesting in these developments. I do have some concerns, but I first and foremost want to say that um, I am an advocate of helping the homeless. Um, I help them personally. I've gotten to know them personally by name, and I do know that there's an issue, and I'm concerned about the second and third generations of the homeless community as well, the children growing up in these um, marginal communities. Um, and I'm happy to be, be a participant of the solution, as long as solution can serve us the greater good. Well, I am. Excuse me, your time is up. Thank you, though, for your time. I hope you'll feel free to join us again. Thanks for that. Let's just write it 30 minutes. Uh, how many uh, more speakers should we have? 12. Why don't we uh, proceed through the, uh, the balance of the speakers and then we'll move on to the Agenda. Thank you. If I could call the next two speakers now, Ann Bolts, Deborah Miller Osorio, Craig Van T, Al Meyerson, and Jill Nelson. And we'll start with Ann. Uh, thank you. My name is Ann Bolts, and I am a resident in Irvine, California. In my career, I have moved myself across the country several times, and I always look first for where's the dog park. <clears throat> That's my neighborhood. It's expensive to live here. I love living here. I live in a two-bedroom apartment. I love rescuing dogs, and I can have up to three. I feel a little emotional about that thing. Um, I rescue the seniors. I rescue the dogs that usually may be left behind. Oh, usually emotional. Thank you. Um, but the dog park is certainly my house. Thank you. Oh, good Hi. Hey. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> nah, don't get scared. Let me tell you something about me. I'm chicken shit. <laughs> well, it's... But I love this country so much that we can't allow that to take to take control of our country. There was a lady in there earlier saying Mike doesn't even go to the meetings, and then. <laughs> the fact that he showed up today. Just what were the names of some of the uh, uh, the, the, no, the next, go the next door? Go to next door, mm -hmm. and um, they're right here. They're all right here. Uh, that one, that one tried to dox me. His name is Stephen G. The one in blue. Uh huh. Okay. Mileage, I don't care. I am not. I am. I so, know who they are. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she's fine. I mean, <laughs> this are. No. Nice yeah, one. Yeah, oh. But we're independent so, journalists. So. so these people, if you go to next door, you will see mm -hmm. what they have done to our community. All we're asking is that we coexist. All we're asking is for peace for everybody. All we're asking is for special interest groups like APAC not to run this country. This country is a great country. We need this country to be for Americans. Yeah, My daughter is in $500,000 debt. She's a medical student. Why? 500,000 when they Holy are promoting Lord. what? They're promoting for Zionism, which promotes what? Racism. They're killing innocent civilians and they lie about it. And they lie about it. And here she is taping me. I don't give you permission to tape me, ma'am. I don't give you permission to tape me, ma'am. And this is intimidation. This is intimidation. You see, this is exactly what they do. That's right. They try to intimidate us. They try to intimidate me, yes. I mean, Thank they so try to intimidate us too, but. Thank you. There's no reason to come after this woman. I just, I'm not. I just came out here and saw her, so I thought oh, it was interesting, just like you did. Huh. Why, why you interesting. Guys? You know what? That's what's brought you here. You know what? That's interesting. She, she just asked me. us a question and we were answering. Yeah, come here. That's it. Yeah, I mean, there's no reason to feel bully. I'm not a bully. Do you look like a bully? Never know. Yeah, you never she says, know. Like, she, says, like she, says like bully. she says she feels bullied. So we're we feel bullied. That's why we have the police. Because okay. we feel bullied. Right. We love America. So it's interesting. We love America. We're we love Americans. Ma'am, you don't need to approach her. I'm not approaching anybody. You're you are approaching me. You are. She just you circled all the way around to get it. And what did you no, guys say? No, She's not going to do anything. She's fine. I thought you guys are First Amendment. We are. We are. Absolutely. So, but you don't need to approach her. But you cannot approach people like that. I'm not. 
You can. But if she's panicking and she's feeling bullied, you don't need to continue to approach. Call the police, please. I feel good. She's threatening me. Call the police. Please. Call the police. Please. Please call the police. Ma'am, you can just defuse it. You can just defuse it and just. Why are you even acting like this? I'm just. I didn't come after you, but I'm not taking you. Yeah. I'm not taking you. You were? I'm not taking you. Okay. I'm not taking you. Came out here to intimidate me. I'm not, I'm not taking you. There are four men trying to protect me from you. What? There are four men trying to protect me from you. Yeah, because I, I was pretty. Yes, because you are trying to intimidate me. Obviously, she doesn't want you near her, so we're going to stop you from getting near her. And that's it. That's all. We're a neutral party. We're just. She says she feels bullied. We're here to prevent that. That's it. Far away. I'm not. Yeah. yeah. Right. What is the point that's of fine. harassing I just what this she has woman? To say. Do I not get a right? She's in a public space. That's her choice. Yeah. That's her so choice. she's in a public space, yeah. so she doesn't have. To. I don't disagree with you on that. You're allowed to hear what she has to say. Absolutely. But, but you can film her. You go from that, a distance. From a distance, I'll, you don't I'll have do to approach her. Absolutely. Yeah. From a distance. Absolutely. I feel like this is a reasonable distance. No, yeah, no, that, that's fine. 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 Okay. I'm not. Just saying, don't approach her. I don't think she's right right coming to me, coming to the, up to me with the camera. Oh, you come up what? to me with the camera. I didn't come up to the. I didn't come up to you with the camera. Okay. Men, did I come up to her with the camera? No. Did I take her? Not that I saw. Did I take her? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Of course. First Amendment. Of course, yes. Yep. Good, we're all good to go. Good girl. Good girl, share that. Oh. I will. Do you need to go no, out? I'm, I'm, I'm asking for police. Mm -hmm. Great. Right. I'm asking for the police. Please do. I don't know what we got I'm in the middle of. I don't either. Great. Right. I think he, he's able to help you. There's uh, somebody. He works for the city, right? Do you work um, for the city, sir? Yep. I'm asking for police protection. I got you. I got you. Okay, you have trying to intimidate me back here. I wasn't talking to her. I was talking to these generals by myself. God. I don't know. I hope you guys are taking this because I, it's ridiculous. Yeah, we, oh, it's we film everything. Yeah, we record everything. We record they everything. Us, <laughs> they want to shut us down. So does she we are asking for peace. What happened? Does she hire you no. 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 No, no, no. Oh, my God. Look at this. No, we don't know her. We just literally... Oh she said she felt bullied. She said you were one of the people that helped bully her. Help I'm just please. here as a mutual party. I have nothing to do with anything. I need police. Yeah, because this woman is trying to intimidate me. Okay, you're coming right now. Okay. Coming right now. This is what they do best. She's obviously upset. There's no point in antagonizing it. It is what it is. She hired us. I don't the know. entire time well, we were in there, she, hold was, on. she wasn't too but happy. Hold on. I fully do disagree with this behavior. Oh, yeah. She was having a freak out. You guys all right? No, no, we're good. We're good. So this lady said that she feels bullied by this lady. We just stood here to separate the two of them, and that's all we're here for. I don't, I don't, I don't know what they're going on about. That's between them. That's them. But she would like an escort out. I'm pretty sure. Where's the escalator? Kind of just hiding behind us. Yeah. 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 I don't know what. I don't know what we I just. This is a strange situation. Like I said, I don't. I, it has a long history. No, no, and that's fine. I'm not here to pick a side. I'm oh, yes, here, to de escalate. But I am here to de escalate a situation that was happening. No, she sure. said she felt bullied. We're here to protect, and that's it. I don't. This isn't my job. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm just letting you know that there's a long history. And that's why I don't make a decision. And she's been the bully. Yeah, and that's why I'm not Honest. making a decision she's in this bullied. moment. No, I, I, I totally yeah. respect it. Yeah. If it was you, I'd be doing the same thing. Thank Whether you, you like me or not, I, I would do the same thing for you if you told me somebody's I mean, bullying you. The only thing I don't like about you guys is your mask, and I don't know why. And that's fine. That's fine. You have your right, but yes, it's not. It's no, not, absolutely. It's absolutely. Not we, we will try to make that but, change. You know, it won't change, but it is a First Amendment perspective. Good luck, good luck. Yeah, I, you're right. Yeah. No. Now, you're on the, now I understand her then. Well, trying to end the there rights. Is, I, I'm not picking a side here. I'm just. No, 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 there's no sides. Just know that she's uh, been a bully for months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just if you if you had come out and said you feel bullied and she was following you, I would I would have defended you. Whether you like me or not, I would have stood in front of you and protected you. It, does, it is what it is. So.
think she's getting a little bit of an education about public filming right now. That's what they're doing. <laughs> Hmm? That's so weird. I mean, if she wants us to walk her to her car, we'll walk her to her car. I don't care. I just, I want to go home. No <laughs> problem. <laughs> He's like, out here starving? If you get this out of here, I have no problem doing it. Literally, I was about to leave earlier, and then the councilman lost his shit. We don't even supposed to be here. Yeah, we were supposed to be gone. We were supposed to be in the USPS. We were supposed to be gone at like 11. Yeah, we were supposed to be next door by now, a few hours ago. Yeah, we have to be out to go next door. Anyways, my name is Jake, by the way. Hi, Jake. So, since you're... You weren't very nice to me. What happened? You weren't very nice to me. But to who? What do you mean? Are you the one that came up talking to us on the stairs? I was preemptively a little upset. Absolutely. And I do apologize for that part, but... I just wish I could see you. It's not that handsome. My wife said this is better. It scares me more than He's got six teeth back there. Yeah, I can but see just, to, just to help I explain real quick. Thank you. Yeah, 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 just to help explain real quick. Thank you. Everything else okay? No, no, we're fine. Right. We're fine. Right. So through the through the exercise in our first amendment, right, we do public filming and photography. You gave it a great day. <laughs> so part of what we do, not all of but part of what we do is we also uh, go to public buildings like this and we teach people, we disseminate, we post online how to conduct and hold your uh, you know, council members accountable, how to hold your police chiefs accountable, things like that, filing complaints, FOIA requests, we walk them through all those processes. Great, we've been trying to do a lot of this. Who's funding you? Yeah. I'm self-funded, I'm retired, so I do this all We might want to get your name because we might want your help. We've so, a lot of problems. Well, we do. We're, we're, we're always open to activism and, okay. you know, assisting with causes that, you know, are, you know, again, people causes, you know, standing up for our rights and freedoms in this great nation. Now, you guys think this is ridiculous. I'm on that boat. I, I, no, 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 no. I, I just want to, no, no, I want to say, I think this is ridiculous too. Let me just explain why we wear it, okay? We, through public filming and photography and through being here, we have, you know, people like Mr. Carroll who came up and, you know, decided earlier to, you know, you can't film me, you can't do it, but you know, demanding his privacy in public, which you don't get to demand. No, I know. So I'm gonna go back in, but I just gotta tell you, the problem mm -hmm. with you guys like this mm -hmm. here today is it has to do with the five months of history of the the, 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 the protest that she's yep. a part of, coming in masks with dead babies, spewing anti sex saying Jews are pigs mm -hmm. and you're Jewish. And it's been a problem. And so I disagree we, with. So I know, no, I things. believe that you do, but you have, we are traumatized by it. So when we see mass people, we assume you were them. Yeah. Oh. But how do That's you, what we assume. But, so bad assumption, yeah. no, no. but I'm telling you, there's been a history and they've shown up it's every fine, meeting. Really, really, we just assume. Really, but it doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah. They've come with their terrorist mm -hmm. masks, and we know they're funded by terrorists, and she's part of it. She's been at UCI, at USC. She's part of all the. And she has a right to protest. Don't get me wrong. So this is what but the anti-Semitism yeah. and the terrorist yeah. 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 racism is, is it, it be a lot yeah. Yeah. Oh, sorry. No, no, no. I was just going to get a picture of that picture. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll give it to you in just a sec. Sorry. Anyway, no offense, and I just wanted to get her on tape because she, I thought she was coming out You're here. fine. The only thing I saw was damsel in distress, and that's it. We just <laughs> moved in on We just started the fuse. She is no damsel in distress. Can you oh. see her on mm -hmm. video? <laughs> She is a bully and she's so, an anti Semitic person who has skewed anti Semitic speech in the city council. So, no, there is not. So, so you can see sorry for you guys. Thanks. All right. I gotta go back in. Yeah, it's fine. I can't go in this way. Uh, yeah, thanks. This one. Thanks. You too. We may be in touch. Yeah. yeah. Anyways, I had a question. Do you have a card or anything? Uh, no, we're independent. Okay. But just look up First Amendment audits on YouTube and you should find us. I had a quick question. Do you know any of the yeah. uh, the newsletters that they mentioned in yes. there? Like, yes. what are the names of the newsletters? It's called the Irvine Community News and Views. Irvine Community News and Views. Do you know any other ones? That's the one that we're talking okay. about. Yeah, because uh, if they're biased or anything, and like, you know, we just like to be journalism, but we're independent, so we like to dig into other journalists. Look into it. Irvine Community News and Views. All right, thank you. Should be a defam about it though. Yes. No um, need for violent protesting. And, yeah. You know, at the end of the day, yeah. I'm not here to promote whatever she, she's doing. I'm here to promote what you're doing. I, I'm not promoting anything. Yeah, yeah. yeah neither are we. <laughs> no, no. I, I just, I just want. We wanted to make sure everyone was safe in this room in that yeah. moment, and that's all I cared about. So. She is promoting, but yeah. I'm not. I'm promoting my my just right to live peacefully in my city that I've lived here for almost 
27 years. So, yeah. So, anyway, but I'd rather you not put me on your website. <laughs> You're so beautiful. Well, I wish I could see your hands. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> All right, gentlemen, I'm going home. All right. Thank you understanding why we were no, no, no. Yeah. Yeah. now we were just not taking sides we were just diffusing the situation I don't, I don't yeah. Actually, yeah. <laughs> yeah I don't care what if you are taking a side no, that's your opinion it was, it's just awkward yeah. for us to see these I just wanted to see it diffused and, and that's all I cared definitely about definitely understand with your guys' yeah. situation so yeah. no worries okay. I was hearing her out a little bit just like I heard you guys out but in the middle of all of that yeah. happened a no, bunch of chaos I was just <laughs> showing the picture no no you're I fine I you're fine <laughs> you guys have a blessed day take care thank you too have a nice day let's go before more shit pops off way <laughs> you always, always, <laughs> this is like the third time you get that way. It's free. Oh, this is some crazy. Have a good day, man. <laughs> Yo. Who knew this city was full of corruption, man? Even the residents are tired of that. <laughs> Hey, should we check out the police or nah? Bro, that's why I was already. I, I don't know what to do with this day, man. This is... This, hey, I came here to show... Oh. I, sh I came here to show this gentleman how to file a FOIA. Right? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't want any of this. <laughs> when they don't find the other city's corrupt. And we're Dang. talking about corruption. We're, we have a council member trying to get the, the, the police department to search us. And yeah. Holy crud, man. This is crazy. And then at the end there... I'm not getting in the middle of any of that right now. Yeah. I can't even film an outro, I should die.